Hello everyone and welcome to our universe. Today we'll be talking about another Earth. Discovering the first true alien Earth is a long-held dream for astronomers, and recent exoplanet discoveries suggest that their dream might come true in the not too distant future. Scientists have found nearly 2,000 alien planets since the first such world was confirmed orbiting a sun-like star in 1995. More than half of those discoveries were made by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. This was launched in 2009 on a mission to determine how common Earth-like planets were throughout the Milky Way galaxy. Kepler's observations shown that small rocky worlds, like our own, are abundant in the galaxy and some of them may be capable of hosting life as we know it. To qualify as potentially life-friendly, a planet must be reasonably small, and therefore rocky, and must orbit in the habitable zone of its star. This is loosely defined as a location where water can exist in liquid form on the planet's surface. This is basically a zone where it's not too hot and not too cold. This is also known as the Goldilocks zone for obvious reasons. Whilst another Earth remains elusive, here is what NASA considers the closest known Earth-type planets to our very own. So I'm going to give you six examples, and at the end, I'm going to compare it to our planet Earth. The first one is Gliese 667 CC. This exoplanet, which lies just 22 light years away from Earth, is at least four and a half times more massive than Earth, and researchers aren't sure whether it is rocky or not. Gliese 667 CC completes one orbit around its host star in a mere 28 days, but that star is a red dwarf, considerably cooler than our Sun, so the exoplanet is thought to lie in the habitable zone. However, Gliese 667cc may orbit close enough to be baked by the flares of the Red Dwarf, so I think more research is needed on this one. The second is Kepler 22b. Kepler 22b lies 600 light years away, and it was Kepler's first planet found in the habitable zone of its parent star but the world is considerably larger than Earth, about 2.4 times the planet's size. It is not very clear if this super-Earth is rocky, liquid, or gas, but its orbit is about 290 days long, so it's quite similar to the Earth's orbit. The third is Kepler-69c. Kepler-69c, which is about 2,700 light-years away, is about 70% larger than Earth, so once again researchers are unsure of its composition. The planet completes one orbit every 242 days, making its position within its solar system comparable to that of Venus in ours. The fourth is Kepler 62f. This planet is about 40% larger than Earth, and orbits a star much cooler than our Sun. Its 260-day orbit, however, puts Kepler-62f squarely within the habitable zone, and the Kepler-62 system lies about 1,200 light-years away. So this is quite a good candidate. The fifth is Kepler-186f. This planet is at most 10% larger than Earth, and it also appears to reside in the habitable zone of its star, although it seems like it's on the outer edge of the zone. Kepler-186f receives just one-third of the energy from its star than Earth gets from the Sun, and its parent star is a red dwarf, so the alien world is not a true Earth twin, because it has a different type of star, and the planet lies about 500 light-years away from Earth. So maybe a good candidate, but the orbit might just be a little bit too far out. And the sixth is Kepler 452b. This world seems like the most Earth-like planet that we've found so far. 
Its parent star is very similar to our Sun, and the planet orbits in the habitable zone. At 1.6 times the size of the Earth, Kepler-452b has a better than even chance of being rocky, and Kepler-452b resides about 1,400 light years away from Earth. This is probably one of the best candidates of a second Earth, but with 1,400 light years separating us, we better start getting that warp drive invented pretty quickly. So to put it in comparison, this is what the Earth basically is as a planet. Despite the planet's name, about 70% of its surface is covered in water. The Earth orbits a middle-aged star called the Sun, which is about 4.5 billion years old, and it is expected to put out a consistent amount of energy for the next several billion years more. So they're the basic understandings of what the Earth is, and in future we should be able to have telescopes that can take the composition of the atmosphere of the planet, and also how stable the host star is. So I hope that's given you a great insight into some of the top candidates on finding another Earth. Fingers crossed we find some great candidates in the next couple of years. And as always, if you want to know any more information, I'll put some links in the description about every one of these exoplanets. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, you can click the like button, and if you want to support the channel, you can click subscribe. Thank you for watching.